Hello, I'm Dr. David Hornbrook, the Clinical Director of Education and Technology here at Keating Dental Arts in Irvine, California. Keating is a full-service dental lab. We're really known for our ceramics, especially our zirconia crowns, but also we do unbelievable and I think uh, unmatched implant supported restorations. Now, when a doctor sends us a case where there was an implant place now we need to restore, we, along with the doctor, will choose which type of abutment or what's going to go on top of that implant so that we can put now a tooth on top of that abutment. And there's basically two categories. One is what we call stock. And these are basically not one size fits all, but there's different ones that are pretty much standardized. If the implant is placed in the exact correct position, and there's not a lot of changes within the gum or the gingiva. So typically we'll use a stock abutment, which are almost always metal. We'll use that in the back of the mouth. The second are our custom abutments, which most doctors now are using because it gives us more control. Oftentimes when the implant is, chi is placed, because of the density of the bone or where there is bone, the implant can't be placed perfectly where myself or your dentist would like to place the final restoration. So now we need to have some, an abutment, something we can build the tooth on top of, to be customized to adapt for that implant being placed, maybe not ideally. Or if the gum tissue, the gingiva, is such that there may be a compromise and we want to make sure this implant crown looks as natural as possible. Now, the custom abutments can be made of several different materials. One is metal. And the way these are fabricated are almost like a gold ring or fabricated, where it's actually wax to ideal, it's invested, then we burn out that wax pattern, then we take metal and we either cast it into that burned out investment or we actually design it via CAD CAM and we mill it. Now the advantage of metal is we've been using it a long time, we know it's strong. The disadvantage of metal is it's gray or gold and so it limits what we can put on top of that as far as a very translucent crown. So although there's met many doctors are still using metal abutments, this category has really decreased in the last four or five years. The other option we have is what we call a zirconia oxide abutment. Zirconium oxide is a very, very strong ceramic. In fact, the strongest ceramic we have. And it can be either made white or tooth colored. Now, the advantage of a tooth colored abutment is that now we can put a very translucent crown on top of that abutment so it looks more like a natural tooth in zirconia. Now, the zirconia can either be solid zirconia or it can actually have a metal or titanium base so as the abutment is screwed down on top of the implant, we have metal against metal. And a lot of clinicians, including myself, prefer metal against metal versus a solid monolithic zirconium abutment. But that certainly is an option. The next option is what we call our H abutment. Now with the H abutment, we can either use zirconia, but frequently, frequently we use lithium disilicate, which Ivoclar offers as Emacs. You know, a lot of the clinicians that are in the dentist that are listening to this say, oh, I use that for crowns and inlays and onlays and veneers. Same material. What we do is we take the titanium base, so you have this titanium base that would fit into the implant. So here's our implant. And then it actually has a channel, and this is where your screw would go through. Now with this titanium base, now we can build an ideal abutment around that channel. And then advantage of lithium disilicate is it can be dentin shaded. In fact, we, it's really unlimited how many shades, different dentin shades we can fabricate that out of. Also, lithium disilicate, when it's etched in the laboratory with hydrofluoric acid, it's very, very bondable. 
So if we have short clinical crown height or the implant is, is angled in such a way that our abutment doesn't have a lot of natural retention, then at the laboratory, Keating will go ahead and etch this abutment and then you can use either a veneer or a very thin all ceramic crown and bond it to that abutment. So you can see we got different options. What's the best option? It really depends on the circumstance and obviously your patient's needs. We got to look at function and occlusion, where the implant crown is going to be placed in the mouth. Steve Tappy, who is our manager of our implant department, is unbelievable in answering your questions. If you have any concerns or questions about when you should use what, and this really should start in the planning phase, where the implant should be placed, when you work with the surgeon, maybe what kind of implant you want placed, because different implant manufacturers give us more options. Some of the implant manufacturers give us less options. So you can certainly contact Steve. You can send him a radiograph. He'll talk to you about different abutments that are available. If the implant's already been placed, again, he can give you some guidance in how do we move to the next direction to get not only the best aesthetics, but the long-term function for our patients. You know, I tell my patients in my practice when they ask how long will implants last, potentially forever, as long as they maintain it. Again, good old hygiene. It was placed properly, and we place an ideal abutment and crown that's loaded properly and is not stressed, that can last forever. So hopefully this answers some of your questions about implants and implant abutments. Again, be sure to contact us at Keating Dental Arts or visit our website under the implant section at www.keatingdentalarts.com.